Hey, what's up guys? So earlier today, Naughty Dog put out this very interesting post on their official website, pretty much talking about how they came up with the intro to The Last of Us. And so if you end up enjoying this video, drop it a like, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. So the headline for this article coming from Naughty Dog's website reads, A Father's Love, Building The Last of Us, Episode 1. To help us understand how that sequence came to be and how its legacy lives on today, members of the Naughty Dog team and HBO show spoke about the work undertaken originally to create such an evocative opening, how The Last of Us Part 1 brings the sequence to fresh life, and what it's like to bring the moment to live action. While the introduction is also The Last of Us's first chance to leave an impression on the player, the Naughty Dog team obviously iterated and adjusted the sequence throughout development. One of the most significant among those, players would have, for a time during development, had control of Joel much earlier. Quote, the beginning of the game was one of the last things we got finalized when we were making The Last of Us. Naughty Dog president and The Last of Us co-director Neil Druckmann said, For a long time, the plan was to play as Joel, not to play as Sarah. And you as Joel would hear commotion over at your neighbor's house, and you would walk over there, you would see they're infected. Then you would head back and grab your daughter, and then everything else in the final game was, was how it was planned." Unquote. But starting the adventure and experiencing all that through Joel's perspective felt familiar to the team, and wanting to differentiate the story from others in its genre, the idea of playing as Sarah came up during a design brainstorm. With that, everything kind of fell into place, according to Druckmann. Quote, that felt like a really unique take on the story. The fact that you're seeing it through a very innocent child made everything creepier, scarier, and that became the North Star. Having that defined perspective affected the entire team's approach to bringing that introduction to life. There's always had to be a reason for what you heard, and there's always had to be an emotion tied to it. Noting Sarah's perspective allowed the devs to evoke the authentic emotion as Sarah wakes up on a dark, mysterious night. Quote, she didn't know anything bad was happening, but she couldn't find her dad. That feeling of disconnection and worry had to be portrayed, so we had stark, quiet sounds mixed with, say, the TV that was loud, or the explosion that shook the room. Everything was there to create this uneasy tension that was palpable at that moment." Unquote. That's also true of the immensely important art direction for a sequence like this. Before Sarah awakens in confusion late into the night, she gets, a, she gets to spend a bit of time with her dad, and we see her and Joel bond. It's a moment paramount to conveying the emotions the developers hope players feel as the entire sequence plays out. Quote, in the beginning of that game, it was very important to build the relationship of Joel and Sarah. During that sequence, we wanted to keep the lighting very warm to keep them looking closer and to build that relationship together. Our lighting is very soft with a more homey feel, and then when things go bad, we move the lighting a little further. When you do that, you create tension, you create longer shadows, you create more contrast in the scene, you put the player in darkness, and you push the player toward the light." Unquote. Pushing the player toward that light pushes Sarah to any shred of hope in a world quickly descending into chaos. Joel eventually comes home, and the gravity of the night begins to creep its way into Sarah's life, as Joel, Sarah, and Joel's brother Tommy hit the road in search of safety. In such an economical sequence, every minute is essential to conveying story, character, and plot to the player, but in a way that feels earned and honest to the moment. As Tommy and Joel debate what to do and discuss the panicked state of the world, the player controls Sarah with a 360 degree view as the trio drives anywhere. Quote, once you get into the car, you have the tension being raised by police cars going through with all their lights spinning around. You see all these vignettes, like the burning house, the headlights that shine on the families that's being left, but the view is very claustrophobic. One of the most important things to show in that drive was the family that's asking for help, and Joel saying, don't stop, we don't know if they're sick or not, and it's at that moment, Joel shows you who he is. The drive culminates into a desperate run through town in which Joel's car is t-boned by another driver and the severity of the moment ratchets up, while also providing the developers a chance to adjust the perspective of the scene. Quote, it's in that commotion all of a sudden you come to and you're a different character. You're breaking the window and now you're grabbing Sarah. Now you're the father in instead of the daughter. Because this level was completed near the end of development, the chaos of trying to finish the game made it way, made its way into the chaos of what was happening, and we felt that that really was the emotion, was confusion, chaos being disjointed, not knowing what was going to happen." Unquote. Quote, the simplicity of Sarah's death was actually really hard to get to. I had made the mistake of hyping up that scene to Troy Baker and just talking about how impactful it is because it sets the stage for the rest of the story. 
and then when we want to capture it, it always felt really big to me, like overly dramatic. While the performance was moving enough to cause some crew members to, to walk off the set that day, while in the edit for the game, Druckmann realized the original take of the sequence wasn't quite capturing what he wanted to. Thankfully, the team had another go at it, filming the sequence on the motion capture stage. Quote, I felt there was more to mine there. It could, it, it could be even better. I had to swallow my pride because I felt my job as a director is to say when we got it, when we don't got it, and I was like, I made a mistake. We should have kept going. And with a better understanding of what he wanted the sequence to convey, the team was able to find the honesty of the scene in the second go-round. Quote, when we were shooting it the second time, I was like, I don't want you to focus on the tragedy of it. Really focus on the mechanics of what you're going to do next. She's hurt. Where are you going to take her? First, you have to lift her. She's in pain. Okay, help her with the pain. And I just wanted to be as pragmatic as possible because the scene is already so sad. We don't have to sell the sadness or the drama of it, just sell the mechanics of it. Everything else will happen naturally, unquote. And so yeah, guys, there is a lot more to read because it goes into how HBO translated this scene and this intro to the show. And so if you want to read the rest of this article, I'll leave it linked down in the description down below. But I mainly wanted to focus on the game aspect and how Neil and everyone came up with, you know, in my opinion, the best intro to a game that's ever been created. Also, Neil talked about how, you know, earlier on in development, they originally made it to where you only played as Joel in the intro and Sarah would just be an NPC. And I'm glad they ended up changing that because Neil said that during one of their meetings, someone brought up the idea brought up the idea like hey what if you played a Sarah for a little bit you know and honestly for a game like The Last of Us because I mean even if they did do that and we only played as Joel from the beginning and we and we were controlling Joel and we went over to the neighbor's house and we killed Infected and then we went back and got Sarah and then got in the truck with Tommy and then you know it, it can it plays out how it originally plays out it still would have been effective but we had to as the players be even more connected to Sarah besides the fact that she's a young innocent child so we were already connected to her connected to her to begin with but what made it even more heartbreaking is that we actually played as Sarah she's the first character you ever play as in the last of us franchise and so having Naughty Dog make us play as Sarah and walk around and get it from her perspective for the first half of the intro it really is vital to how it ends up playing out with her death you know and going to the end of this part that i was reading when it comes to how troy was overselling it as joel and making it way too dramatic because i actually watched the original like behind the scenes of the last of us how they were making it back in 2013 and troy was like screaming whenever they were rehearsing that set and Neil came back and said hey we got to do it again you know and that obviously made Troy very upset because he had to cry a lot and it was very emotional you know and I'm glad Neil did that because what we got in the final product is a lot more realistic it's a lot sadder because in the final product Joel whenever he realizes that Sarah is potentially dying and especially when she does pass away he doesn't scream. It's a very intimate moment. It's, you know, in that moment in time, the only thing that exists in Joel's world is right in front of him. It's his daughter. And so he's like whispering to her, like he's just talking directly to her, you know, and then he starts crying and that just makes it so much more heartbreaking than if he was just like screaming out to the world, you know? And so, yeah, I thought it was just really interesting that apparently, you know, we almost didn't play as Sarah and we were going to play as Joel from the get go. So I thought that was extremely interesting. And I'm honestly glad that they changed that because I feel like it made the intro a lot better. And so, yeah, you know, just everything that went into, you know, with the lighting, I thought that was very interesting how whenever you're first, when you first boot up the game and it's the cutscene of the cutscene of Joel and Sarah with the watch and all that stuff, how the lighting is more focused on them and it's like more warm and inviting. And then as the intro plays out, the lighting gets darker, the shadows are bigger and like the subtleties when Sarah is walking downstairs and the cops fly by the house with the sirens, 
you know, it all just builds up to this moment of when Sarah passes away. And I just thought that was extremely well done. And after watching the first episode of The Last of Us HBO show, you know, the intro is pretty much the same as the game, but they dive more into like the day bef- the day of the outbreak earlier when they're having breakfast with Tommy and Sarah going to school. So it does add more backstory to like Sarah and just like normal day to day life for Tommy and Joel and Sarah. But it plays out the same way and you know it's very very effective and so yeah guys i thought this was very interesting to make a video about what do you guys think down below let me know your thoughts on how naughty dog almost originally made it to where you only play as joel in the intro and not as sarah let me know if you think that was a good idea or do you feel like maybe they should have not let you play as sarah and you just play as joel the whole time just let me know down in the comment section down below Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it or found it informative, drop it a like and hit the subscribe button by turning on the post notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. Until next time guys, take care.